a safe, quality ride. That's the E. In life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. Hearst is home. It's more than just a phrase. It's a way of life. At Mercyhurst University, home is where you pursue your passions, work through challenges, find support, share laughs, and make memories that last a lifetime. We provide our students with generous scholarships, hands-on classroom experiences, and long-standing traditions, creating a foundation for success beyond our gates. Find your home at Mercyhurst University. Hearst is home. It's more than just a phrase, it's a way of life. At Mercyhurst University, home is where you pursue your passions, work through challenges, find support, share laughs, and make memories that last a lifetime. We provide our students with generous scholarships, hands-on classroom experiences, and long-standing traditions, creating a foundation for success beyond our gates. Find your home at Mercyhurst University. A safe, quality ride. That's the E. I'm Cole Caulfield, and I played college hockey. I'm Adam Fox, and I played college hockey. I'm Jake Gensel, and I played college hockey. I'm Johnny Gaudreau, and I played college hockey. Whether you're a fan or a player, nothing compares to college hockey. In life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. Hearst is home. It's more than just a phrase, it's a way of life. At Mercyhurst University, home is where you pursue your passions, work through challenges, find support, share laughs, and make memories that last a lifetime. We provide our students with generous scholarships, hands-on classroom experiences, and long-standing traditions, creating a foundation for success beyond our gates. Find your home at Mercyhurst University.
getting you to where you need to be. That's the E. In life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. It's time to make the PSAC yours. More than 7,500 student athletes working to become champions in 23 championship sports at 18 universities, educating more than 118,000 students and supported by an alumni base of over 900,000. All in and all ready to make the PSAC yours. It's the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Good afternoon, beautiful people, and welcome into The Roost. It's episode two of Laker Talk. I am your host, Tim Quinn. I thank you for tuning in on the PSAC Sports Digital Network. We've got some great guests today, but before we get into it, let's get into the recap for the week that was for the Lakers. The wrestling team had their home opener last Thursday, but fell 24-20 to to number two, West Liberty. The women's soccer team fell in overtime to Westchester in the PSAC semifinal game. Westchester would then go on to win their second consecutive PSAC championship. The women's soccer team, however, was selected to participate in the, in the NCAA tournament as the number five seed and will face the four-seeded Gannon Golden Knights for the third time. This season, that game will be on Friday at 1 o'clock. Taryn Baxter joins the show today to discuss her thoughts going into the weekend. The volleyball team wrapped up their season this weekend celebrating senior, uh, senior Day on Saturday. And the football team as well wrapped up their season. Coach Ryan Remedio finished his second year as the head coach on the road against Shepard. The men's water polo team is coming off of a victory against Penn State Barron and will participate in the WWPA Championships this weekend. Head, clo- head coach Blair McDougal will join the show later on. We spoke last week to Mike Machuga the head coach of the bowling team. They finished second out of 12 teams in the Damon Storm Fall Classic, and it is basketball season. The women's basketball team have their home opener tomorrow against Lake Erie College at 5.30, while the men's basketball team, who is coming off of back-to-back road wins this weekend, as well have their home opener tomorrow against Damon University at 7.30. Both of those games taking place on campus inside the Mercyhurst Athletic Center. The men's ice hockey team picked up a win against RIT on Saturday, which proved to be the 600th in the career of head coach Rick Gawkin. He will join, you, join us a little later on today in the broadcast. And finally, the women's ice hockey team was unable to secure a victory on the road against nationally ranked Princeton head coach Mike Sisti, who will be our first guest today to talk about their upcoming homestand against CHA rival Penn State. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Coach Sisti is on the other side. First is home. It's more than just a phrase. It's a way of life. At Mercyhurst University, home is where you pursue your passions, work through challenges, find support, share laughs, and make memories that last a lifetime. We provide our students with generous scholarships, hands-on classroom experiences, and long-standing traditions creating a foundation for success beyond our gates. Find your home at Mercyhurst University. In life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. Welcome back to Laker Talk. We have our first guest of the day. It's the head coach of the women's ice hockey team, head coach Mike Sisti. Mike, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Certainly not the start the team wanted for the season, but you have faced off against some of the best teams really in the country. How do you feel about how the team has competed to this point? Uh, We've done a good job, obviously. We really like our team. Um, unfortunately not getting a, a lot of bounces, but we got to keep working hard and uh, 
we've had a great longevity of success. So this is new terrain for us, but I, I like our leadership, and I, I think we'll get through it. What to this point do you think is the biggest strength for the team? Our work ethic and our, our compete and the fact that the team's staying together. You know, we've we've lost some tough games in a lot of different ways, which has been challenging, but the team uh, stays positive and confident, and uh, that's a real good sign moving forward. So you're an even 2-2 two and two in conference play, now coming up against one of your biggest rivals, Penn State, in two massive games this weekend. It's the team that beat you in the CHA final game last year. What is your key to success this weekend? Well, obviously, uh, we got to shut them down on the scoreboard as best as possible. Uh, teams led by Janicki, who's a U.S. national team player. She really dominates the game. Obviously, uh, they got a real deep roster, but it all starts with her. So uh, clearly, we can't give her a lot of open ice and uh, play a real good team defensive style, and I think that'll help a lot. Goaltending has been an extraordinary the last few years. You have Anna Nystrom now in her grad year. How has she played a factor not only in impacting the team in front of her, but also impacting the younger goaltenders? Well, first and foremost, uh, she's a great person, a phenomenal student athlete. Um, so she's naturally a real good leader. She's been a real good role model uh, for not only our young goalies, but you know her teammates as well. And uh, she's been very consistent. We've put a a lot on her shoulders and she's handled it well and uh, a lot of the games that were extremely close or we were able to win were um, because of her steady play in that so she's a big part of our team and, and doing a great job leading. Sophia Newton has been excellent so far this season and, and seemingly every year you guys have one freshman that is really a standout player. Last year it was Tia Johansson, the year before that Vanessa Upson. What has Newton done this year to really bring her success? Well, um, we, we really uh, recruited her um, because she's a very smart player, and I, I think the biggest thing is she's improved every week. You know, from week one to where she is now is just phenomenal progress. She's extremely smart. She knows where the puck's going to be, and uh, I think she's only going to get better and better. Um, she's just starting to hit her stride. She's got tons of potential, but I think how well she reads the game uh, and uh, the plays she's able to make, once she gets the puck is certainly one of her strengths and uh, we're starting to see and the team's starting to benefit from that. So I mentioned Tia Johansson, she's already gotten some good honors from the conference, but how have you seen her progress from last season? Well, she's taken on more of a leadership role. You know, um, obviously when she got here, she was trying to improve her game, work hard and help contribute any way she can. And now she's kind of moved into that go-to go type of player for us which brings a little extra stress and pressure, but she's handling it well and getting better all the time, and, and she's getting used to playing in those key situations. So you're back at home this weekend, but on the road this year, the team has struggled. Just one in seven is the record on the road, but following an off week over Thanksgiving next week, you guys travel to Lindenwood, a team that has only beaten you twice since 2018. How can you adapt to be better away from the ice center? Well, the one thing we actually didn't think of till the last couple of weeks is this is the first year ever uh, since we started the season we haven't had a weekend off. Usually we get one to three weekends off before the American Thanksgiving, and we've been playing nonstop. So if you uh, tack on also the Swedish trip in the summer, it's pretty unique for us. So we're certainly looking forward to the couple days off coming up here with Thanksgiving. And I think if nothing else, we should be a little fresher for the trip out to Lindenwood. Yeah, so you mentioned your Swedish trip, and now that you've had some time to really see the team in the season, how do you feel that that, tri that trip has helped you? Well, it's been a tremendous team builder, I think, especially for our new players. They were able to come in, in in August and September and really feel a part of the family and be real comfortable with the staff and their teammates. So as far as team chemistry, it probably put us two, three months ahead of the game. So I think that's been the biggest thing we've seen. When coming into a big conference weekend, do you look more towards your more experienced skaters, maybe the captain, Sarah Boucher, to get this team in the right mindset to take on a big conference team like Penn State? We really need everyone. The type of team we have this year, uh, we're not going to get where we want to go with one person. We're going to need everybody to contribute in all different ways, and I, I think that's the biggest key for our team. So we're getting our new players acclimated. Obviously, we have some um, older players that have been in the fire, and we just got to hit our stride and all be playing well at the same time.
The women's ice hockey team will face off with CHA rival Penn State Friday night at 7 o'clock and Saturday at 2 o'clock, both of those games inside the Mercyhurst Ice Center. Coach Sisti, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Our next guest is the head coach of the men's ice hockey team, Rick Gawkin, who this weekend picked up his 600th career win as we go to the break. Please take a look at this tribute video for Gawkin's incredible milestone. Rick Gotkin and Mercyhurst men's ice hockey, two Laker staples that have seen plenty of big moments, major milestones, and more. Now, another feather in the cap of a Laker legend, 600 wins. First thing I want to talk about is just, when you think about the 600 wins, what immediately comes to mind? Uh, I mean, honestly, just for me, um, just being in a great place for a long time, right? I mean, uh, it wasn't like the 600 wins came after like three years. I mean, it's, uh, I think I'm going into my 36th year, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been at Mercy Years pretty much my whole uh, professional career, and, uh, you know, it's been great, um, you know, and those wins really a by it's just a byproduct of what really has been you know great players great student athletes great assistant coaches great support people you know and you go through uh, athletic trainers equipment people athletic directors uh, college presidents vice presidents i mean uh, you know it, one person doesn't get 600 wins in anything so that's a that's a group effort Fans, a reminder that you can view that video in its entirety on the team's social media page or by searching Mercyhurst Athletics on YouTube. We now have a very special guest. It is a coach with 600 wins in his career now in his 36th season. It's head coach Rick Gawkin. Coach, thank you so much for being on the show. My pleasure to be here. Thank you. With the shutout victory Saturday over then number 19 ranked RIT, you picked up your 600th win. You called it a program win in your post game speech but what were the emotions like what was that night like for you well uh we needed to win desperately um we didn't play very well on friday night in the game we lost um so i think it was good that our group was able to respond and we played much better on saturday so first and foremost we you know i was excited that our group was able to do that uh in regards to the 600th win I, i've said this to a lot of people i will continue to say it uh you know, that is a program win. I mean, that it's not a, you know, it, it has everything to do with our program over the last 36 years and a lot less to do with Rick Gotkin. I mean, I'm, I'm blessed to share in this with a lot of other people, but you know, nobody wins 600 games by, by themselves. Uh, I don't care what sport, what level, um, what gender. Um, you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of really good people that go into that, a lot of good, good people, talented people that deserve as much credit as I get for, for, for that milestone. So happy for the happy for our program, you know, uh, and really, really happy for the win that we that we needed to get on Saturday. So you've had some really, really incredible moments over your more than three decade career at Mercyhurst, winning the AHA conference, being inducted into the Erie chapter of the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame. But you also have had players who found really good success at the professional level. Which of those milestones really gets you the most and is, is most exciting for you as a coach? Yeah, I mean, I don't, honestly, the milestones don't mean anything to me. You know, uh, what, what means a lot to me is the experience that our that our student athletes get, you know, and what, the neat thing about uh, Saturday was I've heard from so many former players, a lot of guys that I really haven't even th heard from in, in a lot of years, and I wasn't even sure those guys even liked me, you know, but uh, it, that that was really the neatest thing to hear hear from guys I haven't heard from in 20 years, and they, you know, they've shared a little bit of their experience at Mercier's and how, you know, how Mercier's was some of the best four years of their lives and things like that. So, you know, I think if you ask any coach, uh, again, anywhere you know it's not about not about the coach it's not about you know milestones or championships i mean those things are all important winning is important it's about you know how you could help your student athletes have a great experience and what you know could be some of the greatest years of their lives so for me that's the most important thing so you have a lot of credit to the players that you've coached over the years, and you're now the longest tenured active head coach in NCAA hockey. What is something that you've learned about yourself over those years? Do uh, you know what? I think for me, it's just being able to adjust a little bit, to, you know, as the student athletes change over the years, and uh, you know, they've changed quite a bit. I mean, uh, there's so much. Uh, uh, 
more savvy. A lot of them are flat out just smart. Um, I mean, really, really smart. You know, um, you know the 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 internet and social media things that I don't really know that much about. Um, you know, they're connected all the time. Um, so I think. I think we all have to change a little bit, you know, about that. And these are good, you know, these guys understand their craft, you know. I mean, these are good hockey players that, you know, understand the game every bit as much as I do. You, you know, I mean, it's not like, you know, they don't know anything about hockey, you know. Right. Um, they they understand it, you know, and you have to be able to be on their level, you know. It's not just telling them what to do. It's, you know, helping to understand why we're doing certain things and, you know, and things like that. And uh, uh, I think that's really been the key. It's just being able to adjust to the, the student athletes as they change through throughout the years. So earlier when we talked to head coach Mike Sisti, I asked him how important the goaltending was for him. This year, goaltending has played a key factor in your team as well. Two very young netminders, Owen Say and Simon Bushler. Owen, who has three games of 40-plus saves, one game of over 50. But Saturday, it was Simon who recorded 51 saves. How important has their level of play been for the team? Well, they, they've been great, you know, and uh, I always say that if they didn't call it hockey, they'd call it goalie, you know. So, uh, you know, goaltending wins. There's no mm. question about it. And, uh, uh, you know, Simon was the difference on Saturday. Uh, Owen, you know, has made the difference for us uh, both last year as a freshman and, you know, the early part of this year year as a as a sophomore um, but two two outstanding outstanding uh, guys two great teammates um, you know and two very very good goaltenders so um, you know happy for uh, ha- really happy for Simon being a freshman getting his first win he he went in uh, he played the second game at Notre Dame um, and that was a uh, like 6,000 people there and he he played great and then he played in front of 4,200 on, on on Saturday at RIT so you know it was it was terrific that uh, Simon was able to get that win but we like both our goaltenders a real lot we talked a lot earlier this year about how young this team is you have 11 freshmen and then two transfers as well after graduating 13 last year but the leadership on this team has been showing on the ice philip wall leads the team in goals and points and captain marco reifenberger just one goal behind how nice is it to see your upperclassmen producing on the ice and leading by example yeah i mean i think any good team um, you know, you have to have good upperclassmen that can lead. And like you said, uh, uh, those two guys in particular and a few other guys along with them have led by example. And, uh, um, you know, they've done a great job for us. So, you know, our schedule, we've played nine games. Two have been home. Seven have been on the road. We played nationally ranked Ohio State. We played two games at uh, number 15, uh, Notre Dame. Uh, uh, two games at number 19, uh, RIT. Um, you know, so, uh, and again, the, the road's a tough place. You know, lots mm-hmm. of getting on the bus on Thursday and getting home early on Sunday morning and it's it's a bit of a grind you know so uh, you know leadership is important uh, days off are important um, and uh, those guys have done a great job yeah so you mentioned a very long road trip between the starting games at the Mercyhurst Ice Center now this weekend you're back at home what's the feeling in the locker room like coming off the road yeah I mean we got uh, we get home late uh, what late Saturday night early Sunday morning from Rochester and uh, they had Sunday off uh, um, we did 15 minutes of video yesterday on Monday. Uh, they did yoga, um, and then today they're off again. So uh, we're going to practice Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we're going to drop the puck with a very good Air Force Academy here on uh, on Saturday and Sunday. Um, you know, I, I I would assume our guys are excited to be home. Uh, you know, we, we didn't really talk about that. You know, we uh, uh, we basically just kind of wrapped up the weekend and you know what, where we're at and uh, you know we're, we're, we're excited to play what, what is a really really good physical heavy Air Force Academy team. The men's ice hockey team will return to the Mercyhurst Ice Center for the first time in over a month this weekend when they square off with Air Force on Saturday at 7 o'clock and Sunday at 4 o'clock. Coach thank you for joining me congratulations on 600 wins. Thanks for having me it's been my pleasure. Last week We talked to the PSAC West Head Coach of the Year, Rich Wall of the women's soccer team. Today, one of the captains, Taryn Baxter, is in the studio. She'll join us after the break. We'll step aside for 60 seconds. First is home. It's more than just a phrase. It's a way of life. At Mercyhurst University, home is where you pursue your passions, work through challenges, find support, share laughs, and make memories that last a lifetime. We provide our students with generous scholarships, hands-on classroom experiences, and long-standing traditions, creating a foundation for success beyond our gates. Find your home at Mercyhurst University. 
in life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. Welcome back on Laker Talk. We've had some really good guests already, head coach of the women's ice hockey team and the men's ice hockey team. It was Mike Sisti and Rick Gawkin. As we thank you for joining us on the PSAC Sports Digital Network, we're now bringing in one of the captains on the women's soccer team, Taryn Baxter. Taryn, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So the team is officially in the NCAA tournament, coming off an excellent regular season, a PSAC West regular season title, but falling, falling short in the semifinal game against Westchester. Before we get into the season, you spent your entire college career here finding great success throughout your time. Is there a year, a season, a game, a moment that you've enjoyed the most? Uh, the games that always stick out to me are the games where we beat Gannon. And in my time, uh, it was my freshman year, and that game was awesome. It felt like we had won the league already. Uh, and then we got to sweep them already in regular season this year. Yeah, so what changes happened from the regular season? Now you're seeing them for a third time in the playoffs. Uh, so far, nothing. Not that I know of, but my game plan is to go in just like it's a regular season game, maybe a, maybe a little bit more intense since it could be career ending, but it's not going to be, and I'll make sure that it's not going to be. So you're a captain on this team. What does your role look like in practice, in the locker room, and during pregame, and how does that translate to leadership on the field during a game? I think um, all the captains uh, really try to make sure that we're on the same page with Rich, uh, talking about the team energy-wise and everything like that. I think in practice I take it very seriously, and people know that I'm more of one of the more serious captains to make sure that everyone's focused, and that helps me be a leader in the game to make sure that everyone's paying attention at all times, especially especially on defense. So last season you were named the PSAC West Defensive Athlete of the Year. What was that season like for you? It's funny. I, I really didn't think that season was one of my best seasons. Um, we didn't really make it that far. We didn't get into the NCAA tournament. But I think because I was a uh, – uh, upperclassmen and I really like finally found my confidence and was able to organize people how I wanted them to be organized that it really helped me and I also had a great chemistry with Fern, Sid and Beth. I think we recorded about six shutouts in a row at one point and we had never done that before so that was really exciting. Two seasons ago that award went to Maddie Elbro. Last week it was announced that she had won it again this season. You've played together for the last couple of years. What does she mean to you and what does she mean to this team? I love that Maddie Elbro and I switch off years of getting defensive athlete. Uh, I think that's something not a lot of programs can say that they do. And um, she, like the other coaches said before me, uh, goalkeeping is what wins games. And I think anyone that watched the Westchester game knows how amazing she is, first of all, and that she kept us in the game when we really needed her uh, and we didn't have a lot of attack going. So obviously you've had some really good success in your upperclassmen years, but you also had really good success in your freshman year, starting every game, making the all PSAC first team and all region second team as well. This year, freshmen, again, have played a massive part in the team's production. Corinne Morgan, who led the team in goals and is a part of the PSAC West first team. Paulina Haar, who scored in the PSAC quarterfinal game. Camille Butel, who has six goals. Anna Marie Bosniak, who started 14 games on defense all have been really keys to this team this year what has it been like to see them step in in their first year and do so well I think as a freshman especially me I really wanted to prove myself and it didn't matter like what college you went to I think all freshmen kind of feel that way and so you can really see it with our freshmen this year how much love they have for the game and I noticed that they stay after practice just to get extra touches just because they love doing it and it doesn't matter if they start or come off the bench. Uh, a great example is Paulina scoring the game winner against Seton Hill in the quarterfinals. Uh, they bring a great energy to our team all the time. In your time at Mercyhurst, you have not missed PSAC playoffs, and you're heading into your second NCAA tournament. A major change coming into your final year of college soccer is the head coach. It's Rich Wall this year who was named the PSAC West Head Coach of the Year. What has he done since joining the program to continue the success that you've had? 
Uh, I remember when I was first talking to Rich about staying for my fifth year, he admitted to me, he said, I, I can't promise that we're going to make it to the PSAC playoffs. I can't promise we're going to make it to the NCAAs, but we're going to try. And you can see from December last year how much he has tried, you know, to get the freshmen here in such a short amount of time. Uh, all the 6 a.m.s, all the running, all the hard work we've put into it has really he earned that award this year from everything he's done, and especially in such a short time, um, really turning this program around. And I think one of our goals a while ago was to win 10 regular season games, and I think we ended with 15. And I think it was our hard work and his leadership that helped us get there. Yeah, obviously a very successful regular season, and now you guys are heading into the playoffs. The women's soccer team takes the trip down to West Virginia this week to take on Gannon at 1 o'clock on Friday for the first round of the NCAA tournament. Taryn, thank you so much for joining the show today. Thank you. Our first is home. It's more than just a phrase. It's a way of life. At Mercyhurst University, home is where you pursue your passions, work through challenges, find support, share laughs, and make memories that last a lifetime. We provide our students with generous scholarships, hands-on classroom experiences, and long-standing traditions creating a foundation for success beyond our gates. Find your home at Mercyhurst University. In life, things aren't scripted. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiate. You can get a lot out of it. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. Welcome back to Laker Talk. We just got off with Taryn Baxter, and of course we wish the best of luck to the women's soccer team as they start the NCAA tournament this Friday. We now have Blair McDougal, the head coach of the water polo teams here at Mercy. Here's Blair. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, Tim. Thanks for having me, and uh, thanks for having all the aquatic coaches on campus uh, in one show. That's uh, <laughs> kind of cool. <laughs> Absolutely. So heading into the WWPA championships this weekend, first, what are your thoughts on your first season as a head coach? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. First of all, I just want to um, – my, my, my biggest realization is how I could not have done this without my graduate assistants, Kelly and Yulen, and my volunteer assistant, Harper. Um, the four of us never run an NCAA program before, and now we have two teams that we're in charge of. And uh, just all the minutia and running that day-to-day, -day, uh, it's been invaluable to have that staff around me. Uh, and all four of us, I think, have a good handle on things now, but it was, uh, it was definitely tough going in the first few weeks. Uh, and then about the team itself, uh, just how much potential is, uh, especially on this men's team early on, we're... We're very, very young uh, and just a lot, a lot of room to grow. And uh, we definitely have the potential to shock the world this weekend at our championships. But uh, it's just most encouraging to know that we have our best water polo um, ahead of us. And there's just uh, there's flashes of what we really can be. And when we put it together, we're really going to be a special team. Yeah, so you mentioned your GAs this year and, and said how much of a help they have been last year. You were the GA, and so what did you learn last year that has kind of helped you this year becoming a head coach? Absolutely. Um, so what I learned most was uh, just the nature of the two teams, the men's and women's teams, and that's really what brought me back as head coach were the people, the personalities of the returners uh, for both the men and the women. Uh, it's just really special groups of people that have been through. Um, I'm the fourth head coach in three years for this team, and so I just really wanted to bring some stability um, I knew how much I cared about them, and I just felt that that was important to this program. Um, and so just, that, yeah, that's, that's my biggest takeaway as, a, as an assistant last year. This weekend, you beat Penn State Barron for the second time this season. Both of those final scores, 12-11. Yeah. As a head coach, how difficult is it to navigate those close games? Uh, honestly, it's, what, uh, it, it's the pinnacle of college sports, really. Um, <clears throat> Being able to be a part of those games was a really special experience. And uh, hats off to Penn State Baron. That, that's a team that's really growing. They're really on the rise. And uh, the first game at their pool, man, the, the atmosphere was incredible. That was college sports. Uh, you don't get that as often in water polo as uh, some other sports, but just how rock, uh, roxious that crowd is. And then uh, they brought that same energy to our pool. I thought our, our crowd responded well, but it's just, uh, man, it was, it was just great to be a part of those games um, and just see that our team can win those close games that we have that fight, uh, especially in the second game in our pool, our senior night. Uh, we're down two goals with uh, just around two minutes to go. Uh, and Asher Jones, our freshman, scores two clutch goals. 
Uh, and then our senior on senior night, Tegan Thomas, fifth year senior, uh, scores a penalty shot with one second to go, basically at the buzzer. Um, it was really storybook ending. And just seeing that uh, this team has that fight, that potential, was uh, just pretty incredible to be a part of. What was the emotions like for you following that game? Oh, man, it was uh, – we actually had a women's practice right after that, and bringing the energy was, was definitely difficult. And, uh, no, that, that took everything. Um, and it was just a big team win. Um, so just – how emotionally invested I am in this team. With the injuries that we've had, um, our, our starting goalie is out, so our backup goalie, Parker, also also his senior, um, on his senior night, stepping up big, having a big game was huge. Um, we had a, a started uh, Nate Lutz for the first time in his career, and I know uh, just how much that meant to him and him stepping into that role. It just, uh, yeah, just sharing that emotion with my guys was uh, was really special. So You mentioned Asher Jones earlier. He's a close second on the team in points with 46. The leader is Owen Hardner, who has 44 goals and 50 points on the season. What has their level of play meant to you as a coach and meant to this team? Oh, it's, uh, it's meant everything, honestly. Um, when we get down, those are the two that we turn to, probably a little too much, if any of my guys are listening. Um, but, no, those two have both been leaders uh, in the water throughout. Um, Owen is a, is a natural-born leader, a natural actor, the, a, quite a personality, um, and that's how he plays as well. Everything about him is big and powerful. Uh, Asher plays a position that is dominated by large, large players, and Asher is much smaller He's probably 165 pounds at most, um, playing against guys 50, 60, 70 pounds heavier than him, always getting position, never stops fighting, never wants to come out of the game. Uh, even at the very end of our Penn State Baron game, after he scores his second goal, makes a big defensive stop for us with 20 seconds to go. He gets punched in the face, and still it was hard to get him out of the, uh, to pull him out of the pool just to stop the bleeding, and because uh, he just he he that he has that fight, he wants it. Yeah. So it's uh, it's really great to have those two. Um, they're great cornerstones for the program. So for you, you're coming out to Erie after being originally from California. It's where you played at in college as well. What brought you out to Mercyhurst? Sure. Um, so meeting the uh, the previous head coach, uh, Pitar, at a, at a camp um, uh, before my summer as a graduate assistant, it just sounded like an incredible opportunity. Um, I was tired of my profession in uh, as a traveling salesman uh, that I've been doing for the past seven, eight years. Uh, and I was looking for a new start, and uh, the promise of a degree from Mercyhurst uh, with the organizational leadership uh, masters that I'm still pursuing, as well as the opportunity to be an NCAA coach was just uh, a dream I couldn't turn down. And it's, uh, it's been difficult. My wife and house are still back out in California, uh, so I have one of the longest commutes in America to work, basically. Uh, but no, it's, uh, it's been a really special experience, and just uh, the uniqueness of this school and this program is really uh, what brought me here. Yeah, and it seems like a lot of your players have really, really good heart and good emotions Absolutely. behind how they play. One of your players, also a native of California, Parker Wood, did something that not many student athletes are going to take a chance on and, and do. Parker stepped into a heavyweight wrestling match when the team needed to compete. The duel was on the line. He stepped on the mat against the number four ranked wrestler in the nation. What does that show about his character, and what does he mean to this team? Man, um, there's not enough time for me to talk about Parker Wood and how special of a guy he really is. Um, he has been um, one of the best goalies in the nation is on our team, and he is the same age, same grade, has played behind him his whole career. And uh, A lot of lesser athletes might have been discouraged, and instead Parker has stepped into a leadership role on our team every year. Um, he is a voice, a, a constant, calming, and logical voice for the team, and just – Man, there's nothing that that guy can't do. Um, in between his wrestling match and uh, his game, his, his winning play against Penn State Barron, uh, he was a 911 responder as well. Uh, now he's uh, graduating early. Where I keep trying to convince him to fail some classes so we can get him back next year uh, and use his last year of eligibility. But uh, no, he's uh, pursuing a um, a career as a Coast Guard uh, officer right now, and just uh, there, there's. Too many, yeah, like I said, I, I could talk about Parker all day. It's just he's, he's a really special person that we're lucky to have on the team. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Coach, I wish you the absolute best of luck this weekend in the WWPA Championships, heading on thank the road. You. And I thank you so much for coming on the show today. Hey, Tim, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. That's it for Episode 2 of Laker Talk. We will return after Thanksgiving for another episode. Make sure to get on campus this week. It's an exciting week. Tomorrow, the home opener for both the women's and men's basketball teams. And this weekend is a packed slate for Mercyhurst Ice Hockey. But for now, I'm Tim Quinn saying so long from Erie.